Hello Year 6 and welcome to your literacy lesson for today. So first of all I just want to start, start with a quick recap of our book The Last While. So in chapters 9 and 10 um, we had that Kester had escaped and then animals began to emerge from the trees. Kester didn't know the names of many of these animals and um, he took pictures of them on his watch camera um, and then a, a stag appears and said that it was he who sent for Kester and he makes Kester look at some of the sick animals. Um, and the stag says that he needs Kester's help. And then another creature appears and pins Kester to the ground. So that's where we left it. So we left it on a bit of a cliffhanger. So we're going to have a look at chapter 11 today. As I'm reading today, what you need to be doing is you need to be having a look uh, for any nouns and verbs to describe the wolf. So as I'm going, I'll be describing some characters and um, some wolf characters. You need to write down any nouns, any names of um, things or places of people, and then and a list of any verbs, okay? So I'm gonna start with chapter 11. So my head pressed into the mulch. All I can see out of the corner of my eye is the stag bowing his huge head of horns. Noble guardian, the blame lies with me. I summoned the man-child here. We discovered he had the voice. I sent the pigeons and the cockroaches to collect him. He will go to the humans and tell them that the last wild still lives, that it is not too late to save us. His father is a great human who will deliver a magic cure. The beast on my back grunts and sniffs me once more. No human has ever been allowed within the ring of trees since we first arrived. It is only our vigilance that has kept us alive till now. We are guardians of this wild, not you. He grinds his paw deeper into my butt, and I want to tell him that the berry eye arrived before I did. So the berry eye is the red eye. And I try to speak, but nothing comes out. Why if the human in question has come to help us? asked the stag. The only help a human can ever offer us will be the kind that aids our own destruction. The stag peers down at me, trapped face down on the ground. I'm choking on the moss and the mud. He paces around for a moment like he's sinking before saying to the beast, very well, then I will fight you for him. The snouted creature heaves his body round and gives a high pitched yowl. Other whines come back at him from all sides. There are more of these things, whatever they are. And then the thing lifts his foot off me and the air rushes back into my lungs. I manage to crawl out of the light to the edge of the woods. My sight slowly swims back to normal, everything coming into focus. And I can just make out the stag to my right, paw on the ground, his head lowered. Behind him, the last wild huddled together for safety, reaching far back along the shore. I can see why they are scared of the thing that knocked me to the ground, the thing about to take the stag. He's a leader of a seven strong pack Animals I have only ever seen once before on a screen in Dad's lab. I take a quick picture of them with my watch, just to be sure I'm not dreaming. Wolves. They're definitely wolves. Their fur is greyish-brown. They have long snouts and sharp teeth and even sharper-looking claws on their giant pad of feet. The largest one, the one who jumped me, had gr has grizzled fur around his jaw. He's so large, it's a miracle he didn't snap me in half. The youngest of the pack, a cub about half the size of the others. So if you're looking at nouns, names of things, places and people to describe the wolf, we've got um, a pack, which is a collective noun for a group of wolves, and we've also got a cub. Looks ready to take us all on and win. A pink tongue darts out beneath, between its bared teeth under its velvety black muzzle. So we've got here velvety black muzzle. So we've got muzzle for a noun as well. He shouts angrily, his eyes flashing straight at me. You will see, you cannot win against my father. He is the best fighter in the whole world, he thinks for a moment. And you smell strange. Some of the watching animals titter, but the grizzled wolf snaps at the cub to be quiet and then pulls back on his haunches, ears pointed, hackles raised and teeth bared. He growls a deep shuddering sound just a few metres in front of him. And a stag paws the earth and lowers his head. There's a flitter flutter behind me and I turn to see the pigeons who have dropped down into the grass. Can't you stop this? I ask them. It's the animal way. But what about the berry eye? The reason you brought me here? What about me? What will happen if the stag loses? Then you will belong to the wolf. I stagger up. The voice, my voice sounds light and far away, like it's coming out of a hole in the ground. I wave woozily at the stag. Stop! Listen to me, you've got to stop this. He mutters under his breath. Do not interfere in our affairs. This is our custom. And suddenly the wolf launched himself at the stag with a roar. They must have heard all the way to Spectrum Hall. 
The deer tosses his horns and deflects him, then outstretched paw catches his rear flank, scoring a long and glistening red gash down the side. He cries out in pain. The grizzled wolf, knocked but not down, snarls and prepares for his next blow. I have to do something. The last animals in the whole world, I have to take them to dad. And I take a few dizzy steps forward. From the grass, the pigeons coo with worry. Please don't do anything you might regret, Kester. Kester, I don't regret anything, shouts the white pigeon proudly. The stag runs for a second time at the wolf, who lunges right back, drawing blood from his neck. The clang of stag horns against the thick muscle of the wolf sounds like a sword hitting a wooden block. The other members of the wolf pack starts to draw in. I notice the young cub hang back, as if he is uncertain what to do. His green eyes flicking anxiously from me to the stag to his father and back. Maybe the pigeons are right, but it's either do something you might regret time, or get torn apart limb from limb time. I stand up and walk between them. There are gasps from the animal audience. The grizzled wolf roars, get out of the way, human, or face your fate now. The stag, even though he's wounded, nods slowly. Have faith in me, boy. Let us settle this our way. No! Look at yourselves. Look at what you're doing. Look at all these sick animals. I point to the group of molten creatures watching us from a distance. The gaggle of cowering badgers, shivering deer and eagles with drooping necks. Look at them. They need your help. What good does it do if you tear each other apart? The wolf stalks me towards me and I find myself staring him right in the mouth. A mouth curled up with hate. You brought about this disease, human. He doesn't know that. No one knows how the disease started. That is all humans bring with them, disease and death. So first I will destroy the traitor that brought you here. It is the duty of the wildness, only to lead his wild to safety, not invite intruders in. He licks his lips with a purple tongue. And then we will destroy you. The other six wolves crowd behind him in a semicircle, growling and flashing their teeth. What if the human magic could help? Asked the stag. Lies, lies and trickery, like this human child talking in our common tongue, the wolf spits. You were not appointed the guardians of the wild. We were, by common consent of all. Murmurs ripple through the crowd. Then why have you not protected us from the berry eye? Calls out a snake, his tongue flickering. Yes, comes out a cry from an owl in the treetops. You cannot save us from that. Only the human magic can. The grizzled wolf um, turns on them all. Silence, where is your faith? We have protected you all till now. Have we not? The natural order must be maintained, whatever the cost. The animals shuffle, shuffle edgily. Then one voice rings out from the crowd, a high, weak voice. It's the young she deer, the first one I saw come down the lake. You only want to keep us for your prey. You do not understand. This plague will kill all of us, and then where will your natural order be? There is uproar. An oversized, scruffy cat shouts her, shouts her down. Have faith! Our guardians will protect us. Some of the birds begin to wail. One of the wolf pack yells at them to be quiet, but they can't be calmed. We are doomed! What will become of our wild? A boar trots up on the white boulder behind me, his tusks bristling. I have taken to the white rock, so hear me. The animals slowly shut up. The boar looks out at them and then continues. The guardians are right. This human child cannot and should not help us. I, for one, do not believe the old dreams about the voice. The humans have been killing us and driving us from their land since they have learnt to live apart. Why should they try and find a cure? The grizzled wolf gives a condescending smile to the boar. But he has the voice, calls out another creature from the crowd. The old dreams must be right. In among the cries and arguments, I barely hear the stag whispering in my head. Jump on my back. Now. I don't take in what he says at first. I can't take my eyes off the wolf, who's turned his back to us, his hackles raised as far as they will go, trying to calm the animals down. The stag is insistent. His dark eyes flash and he kneels down in front of me. Now, Kester, he says, now or never. Everything I've been taught about not touching animals is forgotten in an instant as I haul myself on his back, grabbing a tuft of fur between my hands. It's tangled with seeds and dried mud and I can smell the hot, sweet tang of blood from his injured leg. Hold on, he warns. The stag takes a breath and then, with a giant leap, he jumps clean over the head of the grizzled wolf, landing in a leafy bump in the ferns on the other side. I half slide off his furred back, only just clinging on. The pigeons flock up from the ground into the sky. Cowards, pipes up a voice from my jacket pocket. I look down to see two orange antennae curling out of it. Stop them, roars the grizzled wolf from the shore. Hunt them down. 
and the wolves, all seven of them, begin to run after us, their howls rising up into the air. I barely have time to pull myself back before the staggers galloping away through the trees. He runs in big strides and every time he leaps, I rise in the air before coming down hard on his spine. The trees are narrow and close together and the deer's horns are so wide I flinch as we scope through. He weaves and turns like he's following an invisible path along the undergrowth, snuffing the way. But all I can see are ferns and all I can smell is fear. Bravo! yells the general as we narrowly escape being whacked in the chest by a fallen trunk. The chase is on! Full march ahead! Stay down, urges the stag. Get as low as you can. There's a crashing behind us, the sound of breaking wood. I turn around and see the wolves spread out in a line, piling through the trees. The ground rises and falls beneath us. There's a snarl to my left. The grizzled wolf is running just behind us, not even out of breath, but laughing. You know that if you desert your precious animals now, we will never allow you to return. The stag ignores him and suddenly veers off to the right, jumping clear down into a huge ditch. Tricked, the wolf tries to do a sharp turn but slips in a pile of leaves and tumbles over before righting himself and pounding hard on that tail. Fastest is not always best, jeers the general after him as we shoot away down the gully. But with a triumphant smile, the grizzled wolf skids to a halt and calls after us. It does not matter. You cannot escape now. Okay, so we've done that little bit there. Um, make sure you finish these and you've done your nouns and your verbs, which I will have a look at at the end of the lesson. Okay, let's look at the next part. So, why do the wolves not trust not trust humans? So, why don't the wolves trust humans, and why does the stag think Kester can help? So, talk to your I was going to say talk to your partner. Write down on your piece of paper, and we'll check in a second. Okay, right, so why do the wolves not trust humans? The wolves say, um, the head wolf says, the person in charge, he says um, that humans have only ever brought disease and death, that humans have separated themselves from the animals so far and that um, they've never done anything good for the animals. So he doesn't trust them at all. Why does a stag think Kester can help? They talk about the dreams and they talk about the person who, who has the animal tongue and that is Kester, isn't it? So they're talking about Kester, they're thinking about Kester when they're saying that. So some of the animals believe that Kester is the one that can save them and some of them believe that he's a human so therefore he can't do anything good for any of them. Here, illitary, iring, range, eep, out. Hmm, some of the letters have been scratched off. Does anyone have any ideas what it could be? Have a write down. We'll find out when we do our next little bit. Okay, so what do we think it could be? There's some missing letters. There's a missing letter here, here, and here. wonder if you can work it out. Write it down in your piece of paper and I will look at it. Okay. Okay, so this is the map um, of where they have been so far. So Spectrum Hall was where they started off, which was here. So they started off here. Um, they flew north... Um, and they flew he up here to the ring of trees. Now, the ring of the trees is the place where the last wild is, the last safe place. This is where they currently are in the ring of trees. And they're coming out of the ring of trees now um, to escape the wolf. So this is where they currently are in the story. Right, collective nouns. So today we're looking at some collective nouns. So these are different ones. They're all for these creatures here. And we're going to have a go at matching them up in a second. So I'm going to give you... I want you to pause the video and give yourself some time. Can you try and link these all up? And then I will do it afterwards. Off you go. So pause the video now because I'm going to start doing the answers in five, four, three, two, one. Right. An army of. It's an army of ants. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the different ones. Let's do the start off with the ones we definitely know. Um, a pack of wolves. Okay. It is a pride of lions, a coil or a rumba of rattlesnakes. Okay. Dazzle of, it's zebra, and it's because it's quite dazzling. Dazzle of zebras, or zebra. Um, a memory of elephants, and that's because elephants are known for having a really long memory, so they're called a memory of elephants. Um, an ambush of tigers. I think that's a really cool one because tigers are known for like ambushing their prey for surprising them and jumping on them from nowhere. Um, 
an embarrassment of pandas and I don't know why this one is but I kind of think of it as pandas have got really white faces haven't they so they've got little red marks here they'd look quite embarrassed wouldn't they so they've got little red marks here they look quite embarrassed and then I think this is hilarious a walk of snails <laughs> why would that be a walk of snails i don't know but it is so these are the ones that we've connected up we're going to use these in our writing today so what are the different types of phrases we include in our descriptions of the animals yesterday so we use something called a noun a noun creature of the forest noun plus noun we talked about a quantifier in a noun so like many animals some birds um, this one was prepositional phrases like right in front of me or out of the undergrowth. And then this one here was adjective, adjective, noun. So we're going to be using these again in our writing today. Okay. So. So today you're going to have a go at writing a descriptive paragraph focusing on the wolves today. So I'd like you to start with this. Wolves. They're definitely wolves. Slowly, menacingly, they saunter from the silver trees. So we're really focusing on those descriptions just like yesterday. You actually did really well yesterday. I got some really good pieces of work from you all. So let's just keep that going. Um, you need to use quantifiers and noun phrases, prepositional phrases, noun and noun, and interesting adjectives. Again, same as before. Um, so... So this is my version then. So we've got wolves, they're definitely wolves. Slowly, menacingly, they saunter from the silvery trees. In silence, the pack of wolves stand at the center of the now tightly grouped animals. Um, their fur is grayish brown. One of them, the largest, has grizzled fur around his jaw. The leader of the pack bared his yellow teeth under his velvety muscle. He meant business. So we're describing everything that's going on there and we're gonna see if we can get all of these in. So that is your work for today. Um, and then we are moving on to chapter 12 from tomorrow. So we've actually done loads. I mean, we are a good, good portion of the way through the book. Um, obviously, we're not reading it as well as we would do if we were in school, because I can't read every chapter to you. So when we do get back, um, we can have a go at reading this at the end of the day, just so that we're all caught up and we are in the same point. So today, you've got your variety of noun phrases described. Um, on the school website, there will be um, some scaffolding for you to help you um, do it. It's, it's very similar to yesterday. You're just thinking about your description of the wolves. There. So focus on the wolves. We're describing them and um, make them seem scary. So the use of words like slowly and menacingly really make them seem scary. We've got the word saunter here. Saunter means to like sort of walk without a care. So again, we're picking words that are sort of given a impact on the reader. Um, what else did we use? Um, grizzled fur. It said grizzled quite a lot. And it was like sort of meaning like grizzled as in old, like grey. Um, so you can use that as an adjective. Velvety muzzle. Like velvety is quite like, um, something's quite velvety, it's quite soft. So velvety muzzle. Um, and that's your bit for today. So well done. You've done really so really well so far um, in your literacy. I've been really impressed with everything I've been receiving. So just keep it up. Right. Enjoy the rest of your day and I shall see you later.